Thompson way outside. Bang! Talk about long distance. So this is one of the early games in the season. I'm going up against the Sacramento Kings. With his first two picks, he got Trey Young and Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson already doing damage in the beginning. On the first play, on his offensive possession. So we're going in the paint. Nice move. Gasol drives it in off the screen. And roll. It's Chris Paul's turn to go inside. I get blocked. I thought I was going to draw the foul there, but I was wrong. Watch Klay back up. Like a boss, takes a three in Tony Allen's face. I didn't even jump. It was just so quick that I didn't even have time to react. So this will be one of the best games of the season. Uh, it's going to be very, how do you say it? It's very good. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but it's going to be a very good game. Marc Gasol killing the boards. But the crazy thing is, I didn't expect Gasol to perform this well on the rebounding against his squad. Because he has young centers of himself. He has Kali Stein, he has Bagley, he also has Zebo, who's a 6'9", good rebounder, even though he has a credit card vertical. Uh, you know, he's still a good rebounder. And look at Tony Allen on that last clip, who played some good defense. Tony Allen has, I think, pick dodger. So when he set that screen for Klay Thompson, he was able to go through that screen. So Tony Allen is one of the signings I did in the free agency for a reason. Like I mentioned, I'm using him to guard their star players, to get through screens, so that I don't have to switch off and let computers guard him. So this clip right here will be a good example of having a good defensive player. I'm able to bump him. I don't have to switch off. Even though Sadoransky is 6 to 7 inches taller than Chris Paul, I was playing good defense there because of his defensive attributes and badges. Because if you switch off and let the Hall of Fame computer defend him, even though they have no badges, the fact that they're on Hall of Fame, you know 2K is on some cheese. So it's like they have all the badges and everything, so which is why you're not supposed to switch off. Because no matter what they're rated, the computer always has good defense on Hall of Fame. But we want to play manual, on-ball defense. So this is why people invest in defensive players. So when the situation comes where you have to play on-ball defense on a good player, you have a better chance of stopping him instead of him going by you or anything like that. So that's why I invested in the defensive player in Tony Allen, even though he cost me around 4 million, I think, because in the free agency he was asking for 4 mil. It was worth it because I was able to slow down Clay Thompson in this game and he was the main defender. So it really depends what you want on your roster if you want some defense, if you want some offense. That's why it's a. In this my league, you have to be strategic with what players you want, you know, um, because we have to do everything mostly ourselves manually. And if you have a defensive player, let's say guarding a screenplay, you don't have to switch off. You could just let them, you could rely on them making the smart decision. You don't have to switch off and you could focus on guarding the ball handler. So speaking about defense, if you have good defensive players, obviously, you know, you could do a better job in bumping the player and stopping them. But if you don't, if you took over a team and you don't have the players you want, you still got to follow the rules, do your best. And then eventually when we start a new league or something, you'll have your own squad. But you just got to gut it through. Because I remember when I first, first started online leagues, it was I think NBA 2K10. I joined the league of uh, Chris Move. I got a tryout. I passed. And it was hard because the trout you'd have to win the game. So I was playing against one of the admins. And I won on a buzzer beater. Brandon Roy hit a three. Game winning three. That was crazy. Um, and the team I got wasn't so good. It was a team that was depleted. Didn't really have that much talent. I think I had David West, Mario Chalmers, and Iverson. But besides that, I had nobody else. So it was hard to play normal defense, you know. But I still followed the rules. Um, because I, played, I came from a ranked background. Before the leagues, I was playing like ranked games all day, every day. So it was hard to adjust. I almost got kicked out twice, but they sent me private messages and over time I adjusted my game, you know, to follow the rules. And here I am now, because it's hard at first, but eventually you'll get it. So it is the fourth quarter now. I will start talking about the gameplay soon, but I just want to touch on the rank thing I was talking about. 
So in 2K9, I used to play a lot of ranked games. I played over 2,500 ranked games. I was on the leaderboards of top 5. Like whenever you would go on the main menu to play a ranked game, you would see the avatars of the top 5 players with the most points and the best records. So I played ranked a lot. I used to be one of the biggest cheesers. I used to run 1-3-1 zone with the Houston Rockets. I used to put Matumbo at the power forward position, Yao Ming at the center. I'd have Artes and Batty at small forward and shooting guard. And then I would have T-Mac at the point guard. <laughs> so imagine that lineup, 1-3-1 zone. I was just one of the biggest cheesers on 2K9. So yo, this was crazy. I got a nice defensive stop with Tony Allen. These next few possessions are crazy. Watch, I get a defensive possession. I mean, defensive stop. And look at Klay Thompson, wide open. Because of that cinematic, they put Clay on the other side and Tony Allen was stuck on this side. So that was some big cheese right there. I was so mad. But right here, 2K, the 2K gods reward us back. I make a heavily contested three. So 2K gods were on my side for that shot because, you know, they just have to even it out. So he has a two-point lead with a minute 15 left in the game. He's going to run a screen and roll with Klay Thompson. I know that, so I steal it because Klay Thompson was on fire. So there's no way I'm going to let him get the basketball and score. I would let anyone else do it except him. So Klay Thompson has the ball once again. I thought he was going to go for a screen with Klay or something, but he gives it to the top of the key. He's going in the paint now. We got two defenders there. Beautiful defense. We get the stop. 35 seconds left in the game. Pick and fade with Dirk. But nothing's going on right now. He's playing some good defense. So there's three seconds. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to chuck up a shot right here. I don't want to get a shot clock violation. Gasol gets the rebound. Dirk is wide open. Mr. Clutch. He doesn't call timeout. He's pushing the ball with Trey Young. Trey against Chris Paul to end the game. Is he going to win the game on a three point shot? Is Clay going to come off the screen? I'm bumping him. Look at that pick dodger, that defensive stopper bumping Trey, giving him a hard time. Kali Stein in the paint gets blocked. So my two best defensive players come up clutch there in a clutch situation. I'm just happy Clay Thompson didn't have the ball because if he shot a three pointer and I lost the game or Trey Young or something like that, I would have been heartbroken. But I'm just happy that Trey or Clay didn't end up shooting that. What an exciting game, man. We have a lot of good users in this league, so a lot of close games. Very exciting, very fun. So if you guys enjoyed it, drop a like, drop a comment, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to get flashed, please be sure to share and like this video. To stay updated, click subscribe and also follow GFlash on Twitter.